I, th I think that the explosion of, um, I, I don't want to just say contemporary worship music and contemporary worship forms, and, and our church would feel that way to most people, but a, a, a very, uh, a very rock-oriented, so almost everywhere in the world now that we have, we have the same songs, whether or not the ethos generally associated with that on a Sunday morning can sustain the gravitas of the glory of God over the long haul. Whether it can hold it. It, it is possible. I mean, there are contemporary worship songs that, can, that, that draw out my heart into the bigness of God in a most marvelous way. But there is a kind of lowbrow, hip, cool, y'all come, family, a chatty way of doing worship today. The question is, if, if that becomes more and more prevalent, what becomes of the majesty of God in this book? It's very difficult to maintain a sense of the bigness and the majesty of God if everything about the service is calculated to be chummy and close and warm and touchy and feely and y'all come. So there, there's some, something's got to break there. And uh, I, I think, I pray what will happen is that all the best of contemporary worship music and, and all the best of the weightiness of glory will, will, will move into just forms so that young, your people, your age, you look 20-somethings, um, will, will, will feel that sooner rather than later and, and you won't overreact against contemporary and say, you know, we're going to go liturgical and old hymns and organ and try to do it all old again. But rather you'll say, we've got to find a way so that from the beginning to the end of this service, there's a weightiness about it, a seriousness. Because that corresponds then to what the Word will, will say and who He is and the, what hell really signifies and how glorious the cross is. All those realities just don't fit in talk shows. They, they, they don't. If you try to do your little talk show down there as you welcome people and please just make this as street-like as possible, there are realities, most of them here, just don't fit there. They don't. They get so dumbed down that the, the weight of hell and the horror of judgment and the glory of the cross, it's just people lose their capacity for all. May I add a footnote, even though, you know, a, a sentence? You're asking me? <laughs> yeah. um, yes, you may. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. I am 63 after Yeah, all. that's right. <laughs> you you got to respect your olders. I mean, what, what can you say? Um, um, I, I agree with that absolutely 100%. Uh, I think that practically in the local church, one of the questions that those who are responsible for sung worship can ask themselves is not just, what is orthodox, but what is best? There are lots and lots and lots of songs that are individually acceptable, but learn to choose what's best, not what passes a mere orthodoxy test. That will already change everything. And then start looking around for certain writers. I w I, two weeks ago I was in England, and I sat down again with both Stuart Townend and Keith Getty and his wife, their, their friends. Keith and his wife, believe it or not, spent part of their honeymoon in our home. I mean, how stupid can you get? But nevertheless, they did. And, 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 and you know what these people do every time some of us get together at some of these things? They sit down and they, they, they ask questions like, what doctrines are we not hitting adequately in our hymns? What should the tone be? I mean, there, there are some people out there that are doing this right. The, the Stuart Townens and the Keith Gettys of this world are just a cut above almost all the, the other contemporary hymn writers. Pray for more of those. Um, th there are some people making the right moves. I'm, I'm encouraged by, by, by that.